Well, you know, as somebody who's made a lot of films about true crime and more importantly institutional corruption and the things that go awry in the justice system, um, I've, you know, I've long been fascinated by the Bulger tale. You know, in many ways it's an irresistible narrative. You know, you got this guy who ruled the, the criminal underworld for 25 years, wasn't even so much a stop for a traffic ticket. You know, like, how does that happen? Uh, finally, the Massachusetts State Police has had enough and they force an investigation I I despite the FBI. And, um, you know, they, they start closing in on him and the FBI tips him off and he goes on the lam for 16 years. It's, it's the conventional story that people have come to accept is a compelling uh, narrative. The other thing that has long fascinated me as a media maker, um, as a storyteller, is the, is the Bulger cottage industry that has developed. I mean, I've never seen a contemporary criminal so pass into the cultural kind of myth-making scene. I mean, uh, you know, he's over a dozen books about him. You know, Johnny Depp is shooting one of those books now. Matt. Damon and Ben Affleck have their own Bulger project. Jack Nicholson played a loosely, you know, character in The Departed, as we all know, loosely based, it on, based on Whitey Bulger. I mean, some people have turned him into a hero, you know. And so I've been long, as a storyteller, I've been long fascinated by that phenomenon as well. But I actually never thought about making a documentary. I've been fascinated with this story, but because, frankly, of that glut of media that exists, I never thought I had anything to add. And I never thought he would be arrested. I thought the FBI had given him a free pass. But when it really, when a trial date was announced, you know, towards the end of 2012, yes, he's coming back to stand trial in Massachusetts in what probably was going to be the biggest legal proceeding in Massachusetts history since, you know, Sacco and Vanzetti of the 1920s. Um, that's when I said, okay, I, I think I, I can have my own spin on this. Um, and basically, you know, add to what's already been out there because I didn't want to do something repetitive. And basically I thought using the trial as a springboard uh, to understand what made Bulger possible. How could this guy have operated? Um, who was responsible? Um, and to kind of separate kind of the man from the myth. I thought the trial was going to provide that opportunity. So that's really was my entry point into the film. Um, as the trial unfolded, and even at the start, of, before the trial even began, I should say, you know, the government made it clear that the trial was going to be very limited in scope. Uh, you know, Judge Denise Casper announced, you know, made a decision before the trial started that his immunity defense would not be allowed to be brought into the trial. Certain witnesses that went along with that defense were not allowed to be called. No Department of Justice employees could be called. So it became clear to me that the trial, which I had hoped would be, you know, in allowing Bulger to present a full and meaningful defense, I assumed the trial was going to air a lot of these questions of corruption that deserve to be aired for the sake of the victim's families, not, not for the sake of, of Bulger, who's a you know, brutal murderer who deserves to be in prison, um, but for the sake of the victim's families. Um, and when it became clear the trial was going to be, you know, narrowly focused, and you could make an argument that's the job of the prosecution to prosecute Bulger, uh, but on the other hand, this was the, this this was the big opportunity to get into what made him possible. And when that became clear that that wasn't happening, that kind of informed the mission of this film was to, you know, allow these questions to be raised. You know, I don't presume to know more than anyone else who's covered the story over the years, but I wanted to raise a lot of these issues because I want to know what the answers are. I think it's a huge achievement uh, for the film to have gotten Bulger on camera. He's never participated in any media before. He's been heard on wiretaps and things like that where the government has been recording him, but he's never willingly participated in the film. Um, but just because he says things doesn't necessarily mean they're truthful, so the audience really should be engaged in is this you know, is this an old criminal about to pass into the metaphoric criminals hall of fame as he goes on to meet his maker and he wants his legacy to be as tidy as possible, which means, you know, a gangster with standards does not kill women. 
and a gangster, you know, the worst thing you can be for a gangster is a rat, a tout, you know, an informant. Particularly, it, the idea of not being a rat is deeply ingrained in the Irish culture. I mean, Irish revolutionaries fighting against the British lost many a person to turncoats and informants, you know, and it's, it's not being a rat really is not just a gangster thing, but it's, it's an Irish thing. And so this, this is critically important to him. So that begs the question, because it's so important to him, um, you know, and is that legitimate that he's not a rat or a tout and that other things were in play here as he claims he had, a, you know, he, he claimed he was spared prosecution over the years not because he was a rat or an informant for the FBI, but rather he had an immunity deal that he was protecting the top prosecutor at the time from retaliation from the mafia in exchange for that prosecutor not prosecuting him under his watch. So th that's the essential question, you know, and I can't tell you whether he was an informant or not. Right. I can't tell you whether that's just a guy trying to spruce up his image as the local media in Boston would, you know, feels very strongly about because, you know, they broke the story he was an informant. Does that mean he was an informant or does that mean they have a vested interest in maintaining that Pretending story? That and, you know, yeah. that's the question of the film. But when you look at some of the elements of the informant story, it doesn't totally add up. There's something not right. You know, you look at John Connolly's informant file, it's 700 pages, and actually, which I didn't even mention in the film, half of those pages are cover sheets. So his informant file is 375 pages approximately, full of repetitive, non-unique information that can be gleaned, a big chunk of it from other sources, None of this information specifically led to a prosecution. There's no follow-up in the way that when you compare it to another contemporary uh, informant's file, of which I got a peek at Gregory Scarpa, who was involved in bringing down the Colombo crime family in New York, and there's no question he was an informant. His file is 55, 60,000 pages full of unique information that led to prosecutions. So. What is it about that informant file, you know? Um, the FBI has kind of protocols about informants that weren't followed in this case. For example, you're not supposed to target the head of a gang because if you target the head of a gang, it means the FBI is sanctioning that gang. You know, that the FBI in essence is allowing, is, the, is, is ruling that gang if you're targeting, you know, if you're, if you're allowing the top guy in a gang to be an FBI informant. You know, they, they usually go for lower level people and discourage people from being involved in real criminal activity. So that, I don't understand why Bolger, why they broke their rule for that. Right. You know, the idea that Stephen Fleming, you know, and Whitey Bolger were both informants known to each other driving around Boston as a team of informants strains credibility to me because the whole idea of confidential informants is they're not known to one another. And so that just seems to be like a huge security risk. So there's just lots of things about this story that don't quite add up. But maybe it happened. But, you know, the film is here to ask those, those hard questions.